Good afternoon everyone. Thank you for joining me today for my SWOT and PEST analysis of USAA. Um, this research has been undertaken by me as part of my degree in management that I'm completing. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to ask. And if you'd like a copy of these wonderful slides afterwards, I can send you one. Um, it's going to describe briefly the history of USAA. We'll run through the SWOT and the PEST analysis, the impacts, the constraints, and then how my learning can be brought into the workplace to take advantage of some of the opportunities that I concluded through my findings. So the SWOT, does anyone know what a SWOT stands for? No. No? Can you do no? Apart from the school. <laughs> so, yeah, not the school SWOT. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. And these are the areas that organisations would want to assess for any business plans, strategies, etc. Strengths and weaknesses are generally internal to the organisation and then opportunities and threats are looking at external factors that can affect the business. Next one is a pest. Anyone know what a pest stands for? Nuisance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so political, economic, sociological, uh, social and technological and they're generally external to the organisation. Okay, so USAA, this is about USAA, and we'll start off with the mission statement. Who'd like to read it for me? I'll read it. Thank you. USAA's mission is to facilitate the financial security of its members, associates, and their families through provision of a full range of highly competitive financial products and services. In so doing, USAA seeks to be the provider of choice for the military community. Thank you, Maura. So, biggest thing here for us in Europe, part of the mission statement, is to ensure that we're providing highly competitive financial products to our niche market in Europe. Brief history timeline of USAA. You all know it was founded in 1922 by 25 army officers to ensure their cars because no one else would. American Officers Insurance Company London, so USA Limited as we know today, founded 50 years ago, so we had our anniversary this year. Life Company, investment management company in the 80s, saw the bank. Website in 99. Expansion into the enlisted market um, at the end of the 90s, early 2000s, saw us with a growth 96% active duty officers and 44% enlisted. Innovative iPhone capability was introduced in 2009, the first mobile deposit app, and then big expansion in 2009 when we expanded to the veterans, so anyone who ever served honorably with the military was eligible for membership. So USAA today, we are a Fortune 100 company. Membership of 9.1 million with 38 million products, over 27,000 employees. We're the fifth largest homeowners insurer in the US, the sixth largest auto insurer, the eighth largest credit card provider, and the 28th largest bank. So, based on deposits coming in. So, USAA London and how my role or a manager's role fits in. So, we've got 70 employees, we've got four financial foundation teams. As a manager, we're responsible for leading and inspiring a team of member relationship specialists to deliver sales and service, accounting and underwriting on the telephone. And we're accountable for enterprise financial and market results based on the team's performance. So the SWOT analysis. There's loads of information on this. As you can see, um, research that I've conducted, I did cut it back, believe it or not, and I'm still not going to refer to each one of those today because we'd be here for too long. So on the strengths, just focus on a few of those. Our brand, USA brand's really strong. Our commitment to service principles, 
um, you know, we always try to endeavour to deliver exceptional member experience and we're on track with our goal for that this year of 93% top two block. And of course our highly skilled workforce, we'd be nowhere without the folks who, the frontline reps on the farm. Um, and highly skilled because they have 12 weeks training, onboard training when they start and continuous learning and development throughout their time here. Next on to weaknesses, um, again just looking at a couple, one of the biggest things that we face here is the IT system, it's all in the States, I mean, we kind of, if you've got systems problems we've got to get back to the States, if we want anything changed we have to go back to the US, so we don't have anything local here that we've got control over per se, and then Lack of efficiency in some of our administrative processes. So we did make a lot of headway this year in streamlining some of our non-phone activity. But can we be even more efficient, thereby freeing up um, the representatives on the phone to help the members? Opportunities. Um, I think which ones there? Develop new products to suit demands of members, you know, so can we introduce new gadget cover for example for our members in Europe or just property coverage for the younger members? Can we offer more attractive customer loyalty incentives such as the re reducing deductible or excess of claims for a year, will it drop like 500 to 450 and so on and the longer your claims free the less your excess will be. Um, threats. The biggest one for us at the moment is the reduction of military personnel in Europe. We already saw 3,000 leaving Germany this year. Another 3,000 are forecast to leave next year, all as a result, result of US government changes. Um, they are forecast to reduce in Europe 15% in total over the next 10 years. And then another thing that's Right at the fore for us at the moment is increased compliance and regulation. So we've got solvency too at the moment where we need to make sure we're doing everything we should be in relation to insurance legislation, financial services, requirements, etc. Um, the pest analysis, political, economic, social, Technological, so they're kind of, you look at these then as part of the threats that the company might face. Um, biggest one here, again, political, because of the US government or Senate changes, the reduction of military personnel that's going to greatly impact our business in Europe. And then, again, political as the legislation changes. In the UK and internationally, um, just for insurance even, we saw the gender directive come into force this year. So we need to be on our toes for that all the time. Uh, economic, the weak global economy, um, is that going to increase claims? Is it going to increase the amount of members who can't pay their insurance and therefore cancel? Um, and then the interest and exchange rate. So you know, the fluctuation in exchange rates because we deal in dollar, pound and euro that can affect everything that we do really. Social, um, less disposable consumer income, so are more members willing to self-insure? Do they really want to pay for property insurance if they can't afford it? Um, and then this one is kind of over recent years change in workforce profile. So we haven't hired new new employees within the last few years, but if we were to, next year perhaps, will they be overqualified? Have they people who've recently been made redundant? If we did hire someone who was overqualified, how would we keep them motivated? How would we keep them employed here if they got a better mm -hmm. offer elsewhere? Because that would then obviously affect our attrition. Technological, um, Again, it's the need to improve online capabilities, especially for the younger generation who are so used to going online and getting things that they need done, but we're still restricted here in Europe. Um, and if we were to improve our online capabilities, 
How would that impact our calls? Would we have less to do on the phones? Would we need less people on the phones? So something else to consider if we were to do that. Any questions? So the learning opportunities then that I think over the next two years, for example, that I'd like to be able to take from the SWOT and the PEST analysis and then in turn anything that I learn in my studies bring to the workplace to see if there's any of these um, opportunities that we can take advantage of. Um, so improve process and products with research and implementation. So definitely I'd like to spend some time looking at new products that we could possibly offer to our members and loyalty incentives. Um, quotes not sold, q and and non-payment cancellations, NPC. So there are two things that we currently do in the office today. So we contact those who have got a quote with us but didn't actually start or accept the product. Non-payment cancellations, they're on the increase because of the economy. Are we doing as good a job as we can in contacting those members to prevent their cancellations? So we want to be able to onboard new members better and retain existing members. While we currently have a 93% retention rate, we could be even better here in Europe with our smaller market. So we could be looking at things, you know, is there any sort of trends in those who cancel? Is it a certain age group? Is it a certain part of Europe, Italy, Germany? What might be the reasons? What are we not doing that we could be doing to improve those? And then back office efficiency, so as I said, we have improved there this year, but what could we be doing that's even better? Um, is there anything that we could automate there? And then finally, ongoing manager training. Um, as a manager, I'm required to complete 25 hours leadership training each year, and hopefully I can complete some training that will help in improving these initiatives as well as part of the SWOT and PEST analysis. Any questions? Um, of course, it's not always as easy as that, so I'm going to say I'm going to do these things and whether it'll happen, who knows, but I'll try, because we will have both internal, or I will, internal and external constraints that will stop me from just doing what I think we can do tomorrow. Um, internal, the budget, so, you know, whether it's taking the resources off the phone to help with something that we don't have the capacity for, or just the IT budget in general in the States, we know there's a budget set out, and if what we want done isn't factored into that budget, then we'll have to wait for another year. Efficiency, got to make sure that when we're doing these things that we're as efficient as possible. Our motivation, with things always on the go, how do we keep people motivated? How do we keep our staff wanting to do as best they can, whether it's non-phone work or whether it's outbound calling? External, so we still have the usual regulatory, political and economic constraints. <coughs> we have to be careful with outbound calling. None of us likes to get, like to get a, a cold call at home. Political, so again, the withdrawal of troops in Europe and economic. How much money do our members have to pay us for their products and services? So, summary. Um, USAA going forward, you know, as I said, we are financially strong, Fortune 100 company. We've got the three legged stool, we, we've got prudent asset management, we focus on our employees. And then the other is the customers, they're as valuable to us as everything else. Um, we have got some challenges ahead, but I think we're in a, in a good position to face those challenges and improve where we can going forward. And what I'm going to do is another swap and test in another year, so this time next year. I might not have it recorded, but I'll share it with you if you like, just to see how things have changed and whether you know, we have been able to take advantages of any of the opportunities, what threats, if any, did materialise. And, you know, hopefully USAA will continue to do as good as it's doing in Europe today. Okay. That's it. Any questions? Uh, 
Um, do you think incentives, member incentives, is the way forward um, that we can really sort of keep the members at USAA? Well, we have seen with the implementation of the multi-product discount how that's enabled us to grow our business in Europe. It's one of the, you know, the attractive things about, you know, if you need insurance, am I going to get any further savings? Yes, so they could have the auto and the property coverage and save some money and have extra protection. So I think the more incentives that we can give our members, particularly those returning back to the States, so because we do see, you know, some members come to Europe, they'll insure with us while they're here, but then they go back to the States and they go to an insurance company that they were with prior to their three-year tour here, for example. But if over the three years they've been here, so that reducing deductible, for example, yeah. if they've been able to reduce that over their time here, then when they get back to the States, mm -hmm. if they did go to another insurance company, they'll have lost what they've built up over the time. So I do think it's something. Yeah, I can be looked into. Your SWOT and PEST analysis is very focused on um, the department, the call centre. Would you recommend doing a SWOT and PEST analysis for the other departments within USA Limited? Absolutely. And would it be the same, the findings? I think, think from claims, for example, from a claims perspective, um, the findings with regards, obviously, to political, economic, social, and t th they're the same. Um, I don't think there's much difference, apart from the fact that we want to grow our business to bring in the money. Claims just from the other side of the coin don't want to pay out the money. So yeah, I don't think your findings would be that much different with the regulation, regulatory requirements and all that stuff too. And the online, I mean claims online capabilities, they've improved immensely over the last few years. So perhaps we could have some more for Europe in, from the financial foundation side of things, the same as claims. And then based on your studies um, <coughs> of the SWOT and PEST analysis, is it a common thing to do in organisations or is it something that's overlooked? Oh, I can only speak from USAA and I don't, I haven't seen a PEST or SWOT in my role as manager. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it's something that's, you know, you, you can do it as part of a strategy. So if you're planning on expanding your markets, you could do your SWOT based around that. You could even do your own personal SWOT to see where your own strengths and opportunities are. Um, but I do think it's something that we could do. You know, even as a team, what are our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities and threats? It's, it's got so many uses and it's really, I did this alone, but brainstorming it is better as a group because then you're getting everybody's feedback. It gives you the bigger picture. It gives you the big picture, yeah. We've overrun. Thank you. We're done. Thank you. Thank you.